What's going on, Muscle Monsters? Align Gonzalez here, and today I'm going to answer a very popular question in great detail because, in my opinion, uh, it's not just a straightforward answer. And the question is should I train to failure? And if so, when is it beneficial and when is it detrimental? All right, so before we get into the actual details, I think that it's important that I demonstrate to you what training to failure actually is and what it looks like. So check this out. All right guys, so let's talk about what training to muscular failure actually looks like. All right, so let's say you're going to perform some push downs with the rope, all right? And you're doing your reps, two, three, and you hit eight, and then on that last one, you're pushing, pushing, and, and you just can't, all right? So you end the set. On a bench press, it would look something like this. You're pumping out your reps, and then you hit eight, and then on nine, you're grinding, grinding, and you just fail. You can't, your spotter has to help you with the lift, and so that's training to complete muscular failure. Now, what most people are referring to when they talk about training to failure is this. You're doing your reps, right? Four, five, and then on eight, you're going, 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 you're grinding and you hit it, right? Boom. Or you're doing the workout and you kind of have to, you know, maybe use some assistance or use some momentum to complete it. But regardless, either way, you know that absolutely positively, there's no way that you can perform another rep. So even though you do complete that last rep, you know for sure 100% there's no way that you could do another one. All right, now that we understand what training to failure actually is and what it looks like, let me uh, talk more about whether or not it's beneficial and when, if at all, it's ever beneficial. All right, so before we get into the details, I'll give you a quick answer, uh, some rules of thumb. And um, this is basically just for anybody who just wants that quick answer and doesn't want to listen to all the details. All right, so here's the quick answer and the rules of thumb are, if you are training in a hypertrophy rep range, so anywhere eight to 10 reps, maybe eight to 12 reps roughly, then um, you should always aim to leave one rep in the tank with each set. If you're training at a higher intensity with heavier loads, then you should aim to leave about two reps in the tank with every set, especially on your bigger compound lifts. All right, and this is in regard to training, you know, in the three to six rep range, okay? So when should you train to failure? Uh, when you're training for metabolic stress, all right, so if you're training in a higher rep range, so 12 to 15 or higher, then it's totally fine. In fact, it's beneficial to train to muscular failure. And the reason is because the reason we train at such a high rep range is simply to build up that lactate threshold, to be able to force our body to train through the burn, to condition our body to get through that pain, right? So what that's going to do is going to translate over into our hypertrophy and our strength training and allow us to work with a heavier load for a longer period of time or for more reps, uh, helping us get stronger and push through plateaus. Again, because now that we have conditioned our body to train through that pain or to build up the lactate threshold, then it's going to convert over into our heavier training. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So now that we've got that cleared out and out of the way, Let's talk about um, some examples of, as to why training to failure is never beneficial um, when training for hypertrophy or strength. All right, so by now you should understand that the main goal for when you walk into the gym should be to increase the total workload um, so that your body can adapt to the added stress and then build muscle. Right, so here is why training to failure is going to be detrimental as opposed to beneficial when in a hypertrophy or a strength rep range. All right, and I'll give you an example. Let's say you walk into the gym today to train your back and you start off with three sets of pull-ups. So after your warm-up, you do your first set and you hit 10 pretty easily, but 
you're not exhausted and you feel like you got a couple more reps. So you really grind out those last two, all right? So you train to failure and you hit 12. All right, so you rest a minute and then you go back into the next set where you hit eight pretty easily, but now you're really grinding it out and you hit 10 and now the exhaustion on the target muscles is starting to set in. So you only rest a minute again and this time, you know, it's hard enough just to hit six reps, okay? So, boom, you hit six reps on your last set. Now, you've trained to failure on each one. So I think it's safe to say that the muscles that you're targeting that day are pretty exhausted. So you go ahead and you train your second exercise, maybe seated rows, okay? I think it's fair to say that that exercise is going to take a hit because you're not gonna be able to pull as much weight as you could if you were potentiated or at least not for the same amount of reps, all right? So you can see how if you continue to train to failure throughout your workout, um, it just kind of gets worse and worse. All right, now let's take somebody who's not training to failure, okay? This person goes in, same workout, same person, and they pump out the first uh, set and they hit 10 reps, okay? And then they stop there. They could have pushed their body and hit two more reps, but they stop at 10 and they're still potentiated. They rest a minute, they hit another 10. They're still potentiated, they wait another minute, and it's safe to say that they could probably hit another 10. At the very worst case, they hit eight, all right? But they don't push past that eight because they know that they're not training to failure. So you might say, okay, well, the workloads aren't that different, but let's look at the bigger picture. Now, when this person is still completely potentiated and they go over to their seated rows, right? it's fair to say that this person is going to be able to pull a heavier weight or the same weight for more reps because they're still potentiated. And then so on and so forth. And then if you look at the bigger picture, you're going to see that this person's workout who didn't train to failure, their total workload is going to be significantly higher than the person who did train to failure. And I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now, we talked about when it's okay to train to failure and this is when you are training with a light weight because it's not going to tax your central nervous system, right? But when you're training to failure with a heavier weight, you are taxing your nervous system. So in turn, it's going to take longer to recover. And we understand that the faster we can recover, the faster we can get back in there, push at our peak and continue to build muscle. So not only is the person who didn't train to failure going to recover faster, but they're gonna be able to come back in the gym 100% and progress faster than the person who continuously trains to failure. All right, so yes, it's okay to train to failure. Let's say for example, at the end of your workout when you're gonna bust out some bicep curls because that's not going to tax your central nervous system as much. Although it would be more beneficial to leave a few reps in the tank so that you can maximize the workload. Um, in this case, it probably is not going to kill you. All right, and that's pretty much it guys. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, anything I left out, leave them in the comment section below. If you're looking for a full diet and program. My Mass in a Flash is totally free. I'll put a link right here and in the description. Go there, put your name and your email address and you'll get instant access. You can literally start today. If you like the video, click the like button below, subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.